Welcome to the third episode in this series on creating modern GUIs and apps with Python Kiwi. So we're going to build on some of the fundamentals we've looked at before, initial setup, creating our first GUI, and we looked at some widgets such as buttons and so on. So now we're going to look at a key difference. When I started this series, I wanted to focus on creating our design elements in a Kivi design language file rather than within our Python code. But there are some instances where it may be beneficial to actually go ahead and run your whole design within your Python main file. So I'm going to showcase how to do that. We typically don't want to do that. It flies in the face of good coding practices, such as abstracting or separating your code for readability and so on. Uh, but we're going to look into this anyway. There may be some bespoke, uh, minimal pieces that you want to run. Uh, there may be some more complex logic and loops so where this may be beneficial later on down the line. So let's look at how we can do this. And we're going to perform the same logic in a Kivi file and look at how this becomes cleaner and easier to follow. Now, before we dive into that, I just want to go ahead and look at GitHub to show you just how this would be done um, in the real world where we separate our code out. So I'll just type in Python Kivi, scroll down for a result that looks like an application that someone, a user has submitted. So if I get down here, I see a Python app using Kivi, a friendly fitness app. So we don't actually want to look at the GUI or the application, but as you can see here, um, we, we may not do things exactly the same way, but they have separated out a lot of their code. They have a main Python file, they've separated out into other Python files, and you can see Kivi language files or, or Kivi design files to actually go ahead and specify some more of that UI elements. As you can see here, we've got the key defined classes. Uh, we've got a bit of logic in the, the Python main file. Um, and then if we go back, again, we can look into the Kivi file and understand how things become a lot more readable, even in a more a larger and more complex file uh, than obviously we're currently looking at. We're going over more of the fundamentals here currently. We will look at building our own apps in the future and GUI within this series. Now you can see in the Kivi design language file, we have, uh, you know, a lot of the, the layout and definition uh, around the actual GUI design specified here. And it's just a brief example of how we want to do things properly before going in and showing you kind of the opposite just briefly how we can actually do things in python it's just helpful to know again the caveat there is i wouldn't really recommend doing this um when we're actually building out more complex uh, guis or applications so i've set up the bare bones of a python file which we'll build on to create the gui we first import the dependencies as standards we import app box layout and button because we'll use these. I've left the test.kv file that we will use in the second half of this tutorial blank for now, that's important. Um, and I had a past uh, statement just there within my, my class box layout buttons because when we connect that to test KV, that's how we would do things. Uh, but we've got the bare bones set up currently. We've got our box layout demo uh, root class there. We've got the test app, which is the main class, you don't need to worry about those parts. The build method, which will essentially uh, be responsible for returning the build from the root class. And then we have if name equals main to essentially run our app. That just specifies that this is not being run from an import. It's directly from our own code. Uh, and then ahead, we go ahead and run test app dot run, which returns our main application and activates that main loop. But we don't need to worry too much about that. You'll get used to the flow of things. But what's important here, we're going to start specifying the design in this root class, this box layout demo, which obviously inherits from the box layout within the parenthesis there. So we first initialize, so we've got def in itself. So this just defines the constructor for the box layout class, and it takes keyword arguments or quarks. And then with the super line, you can see there, we go ahead and call that constructor. And then really what we're going ahead and doing now is we're actually specifying the design in the Python file. So we've got the variable first button, essentially just specifies a button, and we're just giving it some standard text buttons. So we're just doing a sort of very basic button here. And the second button here is actually another button, uh, very basic, we've got text, but we're actually specifying a background color within a tuple, which specifies RGBA values, red, green, blue, and alpha, fairly standard for creating color. Uh, and we've got a larger font size, just to show you how that 
differentiates. And then by using self.add widget, we just essentially assign this to our box layout and make it appear in the GUI. So you will notice that I'm using a box layout here. We will look more into layouts in the next episode likely, uh, but this just essentially means that the buttons will just automatically use the space available in a box layout, which is one of the most basic layouts and really what you will see in mobile applications. So as you can see, uh, we've successfully achieved the design within the Python file. Now that's fine. Um, we can go ahead and do some other things. You know, you can do as much as you like um, to create a smooth and modern Python GUI within Python code. It's just a lot more verbose, I find. Uh, so if we do self.spacing equals to 10, again, this will allow us in the box layout to separate space uh, within, you know, separating our widgets. Now, that's great. But like I say, it's not the most readable. And you can imagine when we get into larger applications, Again, this isn't going to be hugely effective when collaborating or even trying to follow along with your own code down the line. So that's worked, but now we want to compare this to writing a lot of the uh, the logic within the KV design file. So I can use those two sets of triple quotations for a multi-line comment, and we can just, again, uh, input pass and this just acts as a placeholder for the absence of any any sort of values so we can go ahead there and run it and we should see nothing on the screen because now it's looking to connect this to a kv design language file and the way we're connected that is we've called the kv language file test um, and what what that does is it's going to automatically look for the matching class within our python file so when we get rid of this test uh, this test GUI um, and close that down I'll show you where that's actually stemming from within the Python file we have the main application class already built within our Python file which as you can see I've just arbitrarily called test app so when we connect to Kivi we want to just use the first portion of that class naming which is just test in lowercase and it will automatically find that there are more explicit ways to do this but for now at the stage we're at and learning this technology uh, that's a good way to do it so what we're going to do is actually go ahead and specify the design in a lot cleaner and really more understandable format within the kivi file just to show you the comparison and why you would always want to extract your abstract your code in this way so we have box layout demo that i initially um write with the the colon all that's doing is declaring the class um as a widget rule within within our file and the next line box layout demo you see with the the sort of uh, angled brackets uh, just goes ahead and uh, associates the widget rule with that that class that we have in our python file again you don't need to know the exact reasoning uh, or how the engine works under the hood it's just good practice um, but the flow will start to make sense to you as you start to write more complex applications or guis so we have a first button that we specify and we nest these two buttons so we just this is more like css we don't use the equals operator here and we can go ahead and just specify these RGBA values that we went through before. We don't need to use a tuple here, um, which is handy in the KV design file. We don't need that parenthesis. Uh, but I've, I've specified the, the color scheme for a sort of metallic gold. Uh, you can look up anything that you like. And we can just specify the font size, again, um, to be larger than the first button. And that's all it takes in the KV file to create the exact same thing. Uh, be careful to save this. Uh, if you like, I've noticed in VS Code, there can be some caching issues. So we'll save that to make sure we get the latest design. And we've got the exact same bare bones as before, but it's a lot clearer. In the Python main application, we want to keep that clean. We just use pass. Uh, so we don't actually need to specify any any code, really. We can even delete that code in the root, app, in the root class there. And then we go ahead and we've got our test.kv very cleanly written for that GUI design. Save that again just to make sure. And we can run that and we get the exact same result as before, but in a much easier fashion. So I hope I've demonstrated to you the cleaner and likely better way to write the code within your Kivi Python applications. Uh, and in the next episode, we'll look uh, more into layouts, uh, further our knowledge with widgets, and then we'll go towards our grand goal of creating some useful and meaningful GUIs and apps.